Hello, today we're going to talk about college algebra. I'm going to show you a very old college algebra book. It's called College Algebra, Second Edition. It's by Beckenbach, Druyan, and Wutan. And uh, it's a hardcover, Wadsworth, um, old school. Uh, I, I think you might be able to get this with a dust jacket. Uh, this one doesn't have a dust jacket, but I'm not positive. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description to any copies um, so you can pick a copy up if you want to. Yeah, here we go. College Algebra Second Edition, Wadsworth Publishing Company, Inc., Belmont, California. I don't know why I think of vampires for some reason. 1964, 1968. Wow, really, really old school, really old school. And here are the contents. Properties of real numbers, polynomials, rational exponents and radicals, open sentences in one variable. Relations and functions, relations and functions two. Exponential and logarithmic functions, systems of equations, matrices and determinants. It's got a lot of it's got a lot of math for a college algebra book. Uh, complex numbers and vectors, theory of equations, sequences and series, probability, and it has answers. So let's go straight to the answers. So page three sixty five is going to be where the answers begin. And looks like we have answers to what appears to be uh, the odd number problems. One, three, five, seven, which is really good. Uh, that, that's excellent. So it does follow that uh, approach, which uh, the modern books that are being used today in colleges also give uh, the odd number answers. So that's kind of cool that you can get an older book and do other types of problems that may or may not be more interesting uh, than the ones in your current book, but I don't know, I think that's really cool. Oh, it's gotta give it a whiff here, just. So you could use this for self-study, uh, certainly for sure. Uh, I think it's a good book for self-study. I, I like the way uh, it's laid out. Uh, even though it's an older book, um, they did do a good job with like, you know, highlighting things and organizing things. I just, I just like the layout, you know, nice font. Yeah. Here's the, this is this is a really important definition here. Uh, if a is a real number, then the absolute value of a is, well, it's gonna be a if a is greater than or equal to zero and negative a if a is less than zero. Yeah, so it's always non-negative. Um, yeah, can't be negative. For example, the absolute value of negative three is three, the absolute value of seven is seven, the absolute value of zero is zero. Yeah, it says we often write two inequalities together. Okay, it says, Thus, A less than B and B less than C can be written as, yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, because to say that, let's just look at this. To say that the absolute value of X is less than or equal to 2 is equivalent to this. And, and the reason is, um, if the absolute value of X is less than or equal to 2, uh, the distance between X and 0 is less than or equal to 2. So X is going to be less than 2, uh, but it's also going to be uh, bigger than negative 2. Uh, but you have to allow for equality, right? So, yeah, so you get x between negative 2 and 2 inclusive, right? So that's what, that's what this is uh, right here. That's, that's when you see that, that's, that's what that means, right? x is between these numbers and you're including those endpoints. You know, it would be the closed interval from negative 2 to 2 with brackets. So this is cool too. I mean, the fact that this is in a college algebra book, you know, is, is pretty cool. I, I think that a lot of the newer books are a lot easier than this one. This one's certainly more advanced um, than the modern books that are being used today. And I think it's a really good example of an older, harder math book because um, it has a good layout that's almost, it's, it's comparable. Like I, I feel like they did a really good job with the layout. I know I keep talking about it, but it just, they did, they did great. Yeah, it just feels good. Matrix multiplication, that's, that's something that's, that's tough. That is tough. I remember struggling to learn this when I was in college algebra and trying to understand the book. Um, yeah, it's tough for people to learn that. It certainly is. And matrices and determinants are, are you know, something that when I've taught college algebra, it's not something that I've taught in my classes, but when I took college algebra, um, it, was, it was in my college algebra class. Uh, 
when I've taught matrix stuff, I've taught it in like uh, pre-calc and uh, some, some linear algebra stuff and differential equations, but yeah. Forms for linear equations. Solution of quadratic inequalities. Yeah, this is just a solid, solid book here. Nice examples with some sets. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. Use use of sine graphs in solving an inequality. Yeah, yeah, you can do that. That's certainly one way to do it. Mm -hmm. So kind of a nice book. Uh, I uh, will look forward if I can find it. I'll leave a link in the description. I don't know um, if there's any copies out there, but if there are, I will leave a link. Um, yeah. If you want to learn math, check out my courses, mathsorcerer.com or freemathvids.com. They're on Udemy, but use my links, please, mathsorcerer.com. I've got a course on college algebra. It's actually pretty good. Yeah, so I should probably mention that. Uh, so yeah, I actually do have a course on college algebra, and it's, it's, it's decent. Like, it's good. It's very comprehensive. Now, it's not as comprehensive as this book. That would be, uh, that would be amazing. <laughs> so um, this, this book has a lot of stuff. I mean, there's a lot. There's a lot here, right? Like... I, I feel like you could teach multiple courses out of this book. Um, it's just a lot. It's a lot. It's certainly more than what's taught in a college algebra class today. So that's kind of an interesting comment that I should make about this book before I end this video. Because if you were to go to college today and uh, take a college algebra course, you probably would not cover uh, all the material that's in this book. So this book contains way more mathematics than what is taught in your typical uh college level college algebra course today. Now, having said that, most, I, I, I can say that about any book, right? I can pick a math book. I can, you know, I could take, a, I don't know, an applied math book like this one. And yeah, I could say that, you know, this book covers way more math than any applied math class will cover. That's true as well, right? Because most courses don't cover the entire book, but this, this does just, it just feels like this contains a significant amount for college algebra. And I, I've taught college algebra before, and so I know how much material is covered in the book as a percentage of the total material of the book. Does that, that make sense? Like, I feel like, I don't know, if you have a, maybe 80% of the book is covered depending on the book, maybe 70%. In, in this book, I, I just feel like there's so much material um, that maybe... 30% would be taught, I don't know, or 40%. I mean, there's just, there's just a lot here. There's just a lot here. There's a lot of special topics here that you don't see. Um, and, and other college algebra books, like for example, probability, it's not something you typically see um, in other college algebra books. The matrices and determinants, that you see that in some, but not all. And just the layout's way, way more hardcore. So yeah. Anyways, uh, it's a pretty cool book. I uh, hope the video has been helpful. Take care. Good luck.